What's up, Bill Calvert Gang? Welcome back to um, my channel. Uh, we're back for another semester, and we're doing statics this time. So, this is the first problem I'm working on. So, let's do it. Uh, I should write the problem. This is 2.65. All right, 2.65. All right, so what are we asking to do? So, we're looking at this chain, um, and it's got two forces pulling on it, right? And it wants us to find each force in Cartesian vector form and it wants us to determine the resultant force, and then it wants us to find the magnitude of the resultant force, and then the directions, angles, of each resultant force. So it's kind of guiding us through this problem, right? The steps that you're gonna to have to take to solve it are basically gonna be the steps that you would take to find each next step. So let's get started. So first we wanna find the um, Cartesian vector form of each force. So let's start with force one. So force one, right? So it's Cartesian vector form is basically I plus J, plus k, right? So we're looking for how much is it pulling in the x direction, how much is it pulling in the y direction, and how much is it pulling in the z direction. So to do that, we're going to use sines and cosines, of course. So here, it's given us angles relative to the y, x, y plane, this 45 degrees. It's saying it's pointing 45 degrees in the x, y plane, and then it's raised up 60 degrees in the uh, up, upwards of z. So. First of all, we want to find i. So i results to the x vector, right? How much in the x direction is it pulling? So let's start with that. So what you want to do is um, kind of create a triangle out of this, right? So we know that we have this right triangle. And if we're trying to find how much it pulls in the x direction, we need to know, first of all, how much it pulls in the xy plane. So in the xy plane, we know that the magnitude of force 1, oh, I didn't write that down. But the magnitude of force one is 300 newtons. So it's pulling 300 newtons in the x, y, and z direction. So if we want to convert that to just the x, y plane, we're going to take 300 newtons, and then we're going to take cosine of 60. So why are we taking cosine of 60? Well, if we're looking at this triangle, we know that this angle is 60 degrees, and we know that the, this is 300 newtons. And we're trying to find x, right? Or I guess this is kind of x, y. Uh, basically, this is this line here in the x, y plane. We want to know how much that is. So, of course, if we're going to do that, cosine of theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be this x over 300. So if we wanted to find, we know what theta is. Theta is 60. So if we take inverse cosine, or if we multiply the 300 over 300 cosine of 60 degrees, is equal to how much it pulls on this x, y plane. So that's how we got this to cosine 60. But that's not all that we're doing. We also, we're just trying to find how much it pulls in the x direction. So 300 cosine 60 is this line here, how much it pulls in the x, y plane. Then to find how much it pulls in the x direction, we have to use another cosine to find how much it pulls in just the x. So if you're, if you're finding this angle, this cosine of theta, what is this theta gonna be? This theta is going to be the line that goes starting at the positive x-axis and goes all the way around until you hit that line. So that is 45 degrees plus 90 degrees. Cosine 45 plus 90 degrees. And then that is the i component of force 1. So then if you're going to find the i component of force y, we're going to do the same thing. So we know 300 newtons times cosine of 60 gives us this line right here, the one that pulls in the xy plane. Then if we want to find um, how much it pulls in the, just the y direction, we're going to take it from the positive y axis, which is this one here, and we're going to draw a line, right? So it's 45 degrees till we reach that point. So from there, we're going to take sine of 45. Because we're going from the positive y, and it's 45 degrees till you hit this. If you finish up this triangle, then you will know that sine is uh, opposite over adjacent. So same thing over here. If we're trying to find the angle that we've got presented with, it's 45 degrees, and this is 300 cosine of 60. And we're trying to find y here. So of course, cosine of 45 is equal to opposite, so y over hypotenuse, 
300 cosine 60. Multiply that over. 300, I guess this is sine 40, or I mean, cos. Uh, oh yeah, okay, this is sine. I messed that up. Sine, but 300 cosine of 60, sine of 45 is equal to y. So of course that's how we got this component. So then we go over and we do z. So what is z gonna be? Well, we already know um, that the force y, and we have this triangle again. This is the eraser is really bad. This isn't even my eraser. Mine is not much better either, it looks like. So we know that this triangle, 60 degrees, 300 newtons. Now we're trying to find the z direction here. So of course, uh, cosine of 60 is equal to opposite z over and minus 300, multiply 300 over 300, cosine of 60 is equal to z. So that's all we put in for z, right? 300 newtons cosine, or sine, oh, excuse me. I keep getting those mixed up, why do I do that? It's early in the morning, guys, I'm sorry. Hopefully you're learning from my mistakes. Sine 60. Okay, Okay, so this is the force resultant. Or no, this is just force one, but broken into Cartesian form. So if you if you then do the math on this, um, what do you get, right? You get negative one zero six newtons i hat plus one hundred and six newtons j hat plus two sixty newtons. K hat. Okay, so that's force one. Let's go into force two. So we're looking at force two. Now this one's a bit more complicated. These angles are alpha and beta and gamma from the Z to the line. So the difference here is that you're gonna use kind of a different technique for solving this. So when you're given these, um, what are these angles called? coordinate direction angles, right? When you're given the coordinate direction angles, which are the, the angle directly from the axis to the line, all you're gonna use is cosine of that angle. So let's say, let's do this for example. So force two. So we know that the sum of, or the magnitude of force two is uh, 500, right? Oh, I should've wrote that down, 500. Where am I? So you know it's the magnitude of it is 500. So if you're trying to find the x direction, you take 500 and you say cosine of alpha, which alpha is the, the angle from just the x, uh, the x axis all the way to the line. So that's just going to be 60. So that's all you have to do for that one. So then we go over plus uh, 500. And then again, cosine of beta. Beta is the one from y to that line, so fifteen cosine forty-five j, and then plus five hundred, and then cosine of gamma, which is the line from the z-axis to the line, one hundred twenty. Okay, yeah. So if you do the math on this, you get two fifty newtons i plus three fifty-four newtons j. Minus, minus 250k. All right, there we go. So we have our two forces broken down into Cartesian vector form. How are we gonna do this next part? Well, we have to just add them together, right? If you wanna find the, the resultant force, all you do is add the two together. So simply, force resultant, it's gonna be equal to the i parts combined. So if you take 250 plus negative 106, you get 144. Then if you take 354 plus 106, you get 460. And then if you take negative 250 plus 260, you get 10. So this is the result force in Cartesian vector form, but we want to find the magnitude of it. So when you're finding the magnitude, what you do is you put these lines here. This is the magnitude. It's equal to the square root of 144 squared plus 460 squared plus 100, or plus 10 squared. You basically take the i, the j, and the k, 
you take the square root of the sum of the, or the uh, of each one squared. It's kind of like you're finding, you know, it's the same thing as you got a, b, c, a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared, then c is equal to the square root, b squared plus b squared. This goes into three dimensions as well. If you have another dimension, you just add plus another thing squared. So that's how we're doing this here. And of course, first result sent is then going to be 482 newtons. That's the result of force. So then it wants us to find, uh, does it want us to draw it? I don't know, you can draw this however you like. It would probably go, looks like it'd go kind of like this direction. Kind of like that, I guess, but it'd go pretty far out. So if we want to find the, uh, what are they, the coordinate direction angles for this line, we're going to kind of work in reverse, right? So I can erase this. Yeah, we can get rid of some of this. Okay, so we're looking at our line here. Let's pretend, you know, we can kind of imagine. But we know that the coordinate direction angles uh, is like force uh, in the x direction is equal to force cosine of alpha. So we're looking for alpha, beta, and gamma. So we know that this is true, we know that Fy is equal to force cos or cosine of beta, and then force in the z direction is equal to force cosine of gamma. So we're trying to find alpha, beta, gamma. How are we going to do that? Well, let's just rearrange these equations a little bit. So if we were trying to find gamma, we're going to, of course, divide by f. So force in the x direction divided by force, the total force is equal to cosine of alpha. But then if we take the inverse cosine of both sides, we get cosine inverse force of x over force is equal to alpha. So this is basically the equation that we're going to use to find each one of these. So let's just plug in what we know, right? So we're looking for the resultant force. We know that force in the x direction is 144 newtons. So let's go ahead. Alpha is equal to the inverse cosine of force in the x direction, 144 newtons, divided by the total force. We found that here, 482. Of course, if you do the math on this, you're going to find it's 72.72.1 degrees. All right, nice. Figured that out. I uh, drew the line wrong, but that's okay. And beta, of course, is going to be the same thing. It's going to be the inverse cosine of force in the y direction over the total force. So if you plug that in, cosine negative 1, force in the y, 460. 460 over the total force, 482. Okay, so beta then, if you do the math on this, it's going to be cosine inverse 1, or we already did that, okay. Beta, if you just did the math on this, you're going to get cosine is equal to 17.4 degrees. So then we can do the same thing for gamma, of course. So gamma is equal to the inverse cosine of force in the z direction, which is just 10 newtons, over the total force, 482 newtons. So then if you do the gamma on that, you're going to get 88.8 .8 degrees. So there you go. we got alpha, beta, gamma. What else do we have? We have the result force. We have it broken into vector form. And we have the components of the Cartesian vector form in uh, force 1 and force 2. So that's all of this question is asking for us. Uh, yeah. So thanks for watching. Uh, if you need more help with uh, your stacks homework, feel free to come to me. I'm going to do some more problems in the future. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. See you next time.